This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. If you watch my channel for a while, you know that I enjoy the Manscaped product line. And right now, this is a good time because Manscaped have actually just released what I have right in my hands here, the fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower, appropriately named 4.0. With feedback from millions of customers across the globe, Manscaped have engineered the next generation of groin and body trimmers by focusing on intelligent functionality. So as I said, this is the Lawnmower 4.0 and it's got these advanced skin safe blades at the top which are made out of ceramic so uh, when you're shaving where this is designed to shave you're not going to get any nicks because nicks when shaving suck nicks where this thing is designed to shave suck even more also the blade can be replaced very easily so that is also a plus basically you know how these things work you bump it on like that it starts buzzing and then look i got a little bit of hand hair and and now now i don't it's very easy it's very smooth it's also waterproof so you can do it in the shower not get hair everywhere which is fantastic and when it comes to charging you just pop it in here charges wirelessly easy does it it'll run for 90 minutes there's loads of other cool features and what you need to do is just go to manscape.com you'll get 20 percent off if you use the code mega projects again that's manscape.com use the code mega projects and let's get into today's video For many, the first few months of 2021 felt like a grim, attritional extension to the strenuous 2020. With countries around the world still experiencing various degrees of lockdown, it felt like a time when our attention was entirely focused on the crisis enveloping our planet. Well, almost. But out of the COVID-19 gloom, another story emerged in February that captivated the public's attention. For a few days, and then weeks, our interest was drawn away from the virus circling Earth and instead fell on the remarkable exploits of NASA's Mars 2020 mission as it began to beam back remarkable photos and audio from the surface of the red planet. It was perhaps fitting that during one of our darkest, most introspective periods, we were given a reminder of just how ingenious humans can be and just how far the exploits of humans human adventure can travel. The rusty, iron-colored planet called Mars orbits on average around 225 million kilometers from Earth, though that fluctuates considerably and a close approach between the two is 54.6 million kilometers. Mars has long fascinated humans, and since the early 1970s, we've actually visited the planet quite regularly. In total, there have now been 49 different Mars missions, though their success rate has varied wildly, from the total launch failure to the mesmerizing exploits of some of the recent rovers and, well, of course, everything else in between. And if the latest feats of Mars exploration spark your imagination, well, why not check out our video on the rarely discussed Soviet mission to Mars in 1971, which resulted in the first landing on the planet. It's a good one. I'd recommend it if I do say so myself. So, started in 1993, NASA's Mars Exploration Program, or MEP, has for the last 28 years sent 10 separate missions to Mars, aiming to further our understanding of the Red Planet. This began in 1996 with the Mars Global Surveyor, while the Mars 2020 mission is its most recent venture. Broadly speaking, the MEP comes with four principal goals. 1. Determine if there is or was life on Mars. 2. Study the planet's geology and determine if water is present. 3. Study the climate. And lastly, at four, certainly most excitingly, to prepare for human exploration on Mars. I don't know, finding life on Mars? I would find that personally more exciting than us going to Mars, because then it's like, oh my god, there's life everywhere. <laughs> there's a lot of life. These 10 missions have come with varying degrees of success, but despite MEP missions having some of the highest rates of failure within NASA, only two MEP vehicles have ever been lost, both part of Mars's Surveyor 98 missions. Six missions are still active and have broadened our understanding of everything from the chemical makeup of rocks and persistent liquid water from the past to atmospheric methane and organic Martian material. Now look, we're not exactly on the verge of sending people to Mars, but it does feel that we're closer than ever.
The latest MEP mission and the main focus of our video today is the Mars 2020 mission, complete with its Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter. Again, its goals are very much a continuation of the past MEP missions, but most would probably agree that things seem to have been taken up a bit of a notch or two. Its main task is to search for habitable conditions on Mars, or signs of it at least, and will include examining biosignatures that NASA hopes will reveal evidence of past life and water, collecting rock samples that will be retrieved by a future mission, and testing the latest robotic technology that might one day facilitate our own visit to Mars. The mission was formally announced in 2012, with the instruments to be used chosen in 2014 after an open competition involving various manufacturers. This was a decade of uncertainty for NASA, especially after it was hit with $300 million worth of cuts to its Planetary Science Division in 2013. This was a cut that appeared at odds with President Obama's pledge in 2010 that the US would send a crewed orbital mission to Mars by the mid-2030s. But if we've learned anything from the past few years, politics and science don't always get along, and after plenty of wrangling and numerous changes in mission profile, Mars 2020 secured a budget that would stretch to $2.8 billion over a decade. Much of the focus of the Mars 2020 mission has been on the two quite extraordinary little vehicles on board, but let's be honest, without a suitable spacecraft, they're just two very expensive toys. The spacecraft that delivered the Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter was formed of three separate stages. The first was the 539 kilogram cruise stage tasked with getting everything from Earth to Mars. This was sent up into space on the back of an Atlas V541 rocket and measured 2.65 meters in diameter and 1.6 meters in height. The cruise stage was mostly built using aluminium and has an outer ring of ribs covered with solar panels measuring 2.65 meters in diameter, which provide the spacecraft with up to 600 watts of power near Earth and 300 watts closer to Mars. A star scanner and sun sensor are both used to orientate the cruise stage and maintain its course by analyzing the position of the sun and stars in relation to itself. The second component of the spacecraft is the Entry, Descent, and Landing System, or EDLS, that comes with a 575-kilogram aero shell descent vehicle and 440 kilogram heat shield. The aeroshell is formed of an aluminium honeycomb structure sandwiched between graphite epoxy face sheets and is responsible for keeping the invaluable scientific instruments and vehicles inside safe as the EDLS comes through Mars's atmosphere. The heat shield is made of a phenolic impregnated carbon ablator and can withstand temperatures of up to 1,300 degrees Celsius. Now, the final section is the 1,070 kg descent stage, which is needed to safely deliver perseverance and ingenuity onto the surface of Mars. It comes with a 21.5 meter wide, 81 kg parachute made of polyester and nylon, and has small thrusters designed to control its descent as it nears the surface of the planet. Oh, and I know we're about to get pretty niche here, but if you happen to be into parachutes and binary codes, then We've got a fun little tidbit of information for you later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. Remember I said that this project was going to cost around $2.8 billion? Well, around $2.2 billion of that is going on the development of the Perseverance rover, and that's with significant cost-cutting already occurring. Mars's exploration certainly isn't cheap, but the potential benefits could be enormous. The design of Perseverance is principally the same as the Curiosity rover that touched down on Mars on the 6th of August 2012, but it includes several upgrades. It comes with seven primary payload instruments, 19 cameras, two micro phones and perhaps most impressively its own helicopter. Perseverance is 2.9 meters in length with a diameter of 2.7 meters and a height of 2.2 meters, which is roughly the size of a small SUV. Yeah, when you see pictures of this, at least for me, I was like, oh my god, it's like a car. In my mind, Mars rovers were like remote control cars, but then you see it and they have the models, you know, with the people standing next to it and you're like, oh my god, it's very large. It has six durable aluminium wheels, each 52.5 centimeters in diameter, and covered with cleats for traction and curved titanium spokes for springy support. It also comes with a single 2.1 meter long robotic arm, which includes a complex rock coring and sampling mechanism that can quickly and easily store samples in sterile test tubes. This little Mars adventurer also comes with its own radioisotope thermoelectric power generator, along with 4.8 kilograms of plutonium-238 oxide as its power source. 
The heat given off from the plutonium is converted into electricity, which at launch is equivalent to about 110 watts. This electricity then powers the two lithium-ion rechargeable batteries, which are responsible for all of Perseverance's movements, but need to be recharged frequently. This power source has been designed to work continuously for the next 14 years, but most agree that it will still be producing energy long after this. So let's move on to the instruments that are on Perseverance. Number one is the Mars Oxygen ISRU experiment, a rudimentary technology that aims to produce small amounts of oxygen for the Martian atmosphere, something it did successfully on the 20th of April when it produced 5.37 grams of O2 in an hour. The idea is, and I'm talking pretty distant here, that we'll be able to scale up this small instrument and provide enough oxygen for humans on Mars. Next up, there's a planetary instrument for X-ray lithochemistry, which is an X-ray fluorescent spectrometer used to study the elemental composition of Martian surface materials. Then there's a radar imager for Mars's subsurface environment, a Norwegian-built radar that will be directed underground to a depth of 10 meters to study densities, buried rocks, and hopefully even underground water or ice. Next up is the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, which incorporates a set of sensors that will measure temperature, wind speed and direction, as well as pressure, relative humidity, radiation, and dust particle size and shape. Then there's the SuperCam, which comes with a lofty name, but one it probably deserves. This will provide imaging, chemical composition analysis, and mineralogy in rocks and regolith from a distance, using two lasers and four spectrometers that NASA hopes will reveal past habitability. Next up is the Mastcam Z, where the majority of the rover's cameras are located. And finally, there's the Scanning Habitable Environments with Raman and Luminescence for Organics and Chemicals, which is a wordy mouthful used to describe this ultraviolet Raman spectrometer used to assess fine-scale mineralogy and detect organic compounds. Certainly an exciting part of the rover. Now, if all of that wasn't enough, Perseverance comes with its own experimental helicopter named Ingenuity that will be used to test the feasibility of flight within Mars's atmosphere, while potentially also scouting routes for the rover itself. It comes with a 30-day Martian experimental flight test window, which is 31 days to us Earthlings, and it weighs less than 1.8 kilograms, that's 4 pounds, making it about the same weight as three basketballs. Ingenuity comes with two 1.2-meter rotor blades and a solar panel above that charges the lithium-ion batteries. This provides enough power for a single 90-second flight per day, a flight that consumes around 350 watts of energy. It can't exactly go far with an operational range of up to 300 meters and a mighty altitude limit of just 10 meters, but considering this tiny helicopter represents the first ever powered flight on a different planet, I think we can forgive it for its operational limitations. This is especially true when you consider that the atmosphere on Mars is about 100 times thinner than that on Earth, making it considerably harder for anything to take off from its surface. In fact, flying a helicopter on Mars is the equivalent of flying a helicopter at 30,000 meters or 100,000 feet on Earth, which never happens, as the record helicopter altitude on Earth is less than half of that. Finally, there's quite a nice touch included on this historic aircraft, because Ingenuity carries with it a tiny piece of fabric taken from the wing of the Wright Flyer, the first aircraft to make a controlled flight near Kitty Hawk in 1903, another topic that we've covered on Mega Projects, just in case you're interested. With the human race rather haphazardly attempting to deal with the global pandemic, Mars 2020 blasted clear from Plague Planet on the 30th of July. Don't particularly have anything to tell you about the seven-month journey, as it seems to have all gone like clockwork, and I mean, after all, that was the easy bit. While success rates have improved in the last decade or so, more than a few man-made objects have smashed into Mars during our 50 years of exploration. Quite simply, the list of things that can go wrong is long enough to give any NASA employee sleepless nights, and nine separate missions have failed at this point. Whether it's one of the many possible system malfunctions, structural issues, atmospheric anomalies, or even just plain bad luck when you land in precisely the wrong spot, there was plenty to set the nerves on edge on the 18th of February as the EDLS detached from the cruise stage and began its descent through Mars's atmosphere, a period known to the NASA team as the Seven Minutes of Terror. As the EDLS hurtled towards Mars, its speed went from over 16,000 kilometers an hour to roughly 1,600 kilometers an hour in about a minute, thanks to the heat loss in the Martian atmosphere. Once through, the EDLS jettisoned its lower heat shield and deployed its parachutes, which slowed the craft further to 320 kilometers an hour while still being about 1.9 kilometers 
above the surface. Twenty seconds after the parachute appeared, the upper shield completely detached, leaving the descent stage to make a slow, controlled descent with the aid of its boosters before completing the landing with the wonderfully named Sky Crane Maneuver. While still 20 meters above the ground, the descent stage held its altitude and began lowering the rover via cables to the surface of Mars. As this was happening, the rover was busy preparing itself by unstowing its mobility system and locking its legs and wheels into a landing position. The moment the rover sensed it had safely touched down, it cut the cables, allowing the descent stage to crash land well clear of the rover. Of course, because of the delay in relaying information back to Earth, the news that Perseverance had made an almost perfect landing in the Yezero crater took 12 minutes to travel back to those biting their nails in anticipation. Once the news broke, celebrations erupted as nearly nine years of hard work was finally realized. As complex and nerve-shredding as the landing had been, it merely signaled the beginning of the rover's real mission. Within a matter of hours, pictures were being beamed back to Earth, and this was followed shortly thereafter by the slightly eerie recording of the Martian Breeze, the first ever audio recording from a different planet. The video of the landing was soon seen by millions of people around the world, and I must say, there's something hugely dramatic about watching this man-made object descend to the surface of Mars. And as promised when the parachute opened, it revealed a pattern that to the overwhelming majority of us was nothing more than a random design, but actually it included a secret message written in binary code. It read, Dare mighty things, a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, and also the GPS coordinates of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, the center essentially running the whole show. Both Perseverance and Ingenuity reported a clean bill of health, but it would be nearly three weeks until the rover made its first test drive on the 4th of March 2021, and Ingenuity wouldn't make its maiden flight until the 19th of April. Since then, Ingenuity has made a further six flights, the longest of which lasted 140 seconds and saw the helicopter cover 215 meters. Perseverance has also been busy and has begun visiting the sites of interest sent out by NASA. These include the bottom and upper parts of the 3.4 to 3.8 billion year old Neret Vervalis Delta, the ancient shoreline covered with transverse alien ridges, dunes, and mass-wasting deposits, and a climb to the Yezero crater rim. This area was chosen because it's likely thought to contain perchlorates, a chemical compound that often points to perchlorate-reducing microbes. Basically, if you're looking for very basic forms of life, present now or in the past, this is the kind of place to start. It's not quite as simple as just gallivanting off into the sunset, as Perseverance needs to return periodically to a pre-designed depot with rock samples before continuing on. The samples will be recorded and then collected by a future mission, which one isn't particularly clear, but at some point, something is going to come and pick up those samples. The global reaction when Perseverance safely touched down showed us that those back on Earth needed a bit of a win, and this wonderfully adventurous and scientific distraction certainly provided that. This wasn't the first time excellent quality images were beamed back from Mars, nor is it the first major landing, but this one did feel special. The audio recordings, oxygen production, and pioneering flights from Ingenuity really gave us the impression that our exploration of Mars is moving forward. Don't get me wrong, geological examinations are vital, but for many, they don't exactly get the blood racing. However, with such wonderful advancements in technology, we are able to witness the landing and progress of the mission in more detail than we ever have. And yet, it's not just about perseverance and ingenuity. On the 14th of May 2021, the Chinese Tianwen-1 also made a successful landing on Mars to take the number of missions currently operating on the planet to four, with another eight orbiting above. We're still some way off sending humans to Mars, but in the last few years, some huge strides have been taken. The successful production of oxygen, though incredibly small, does show that this experiment technology works, while the relatively smooth mission of Mars 2020 also indicates a degree of stability that we'll surely need. This is a mission that is but the latest in a long line, aiming to peel back the mysteries of Mars. Maybe we'll find evidence of life from the past, and then again, maybe we won't. But either way, this mission is helping to pave the way for humanity's long-awaited visit to the Red Planet, and came at a time when we could really do with an otherworldly distraction from the turbulence occurring on Earth. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.